Good morning and happy Saturday to you. Uh, got another day at the shop, so I'm going to make another video. Try to do this every time I'm out here, just short 10 minute videos to keep uh, the YouTube algorithm happy and give you guys something to watch. So, out here with the Overland bus, and I've kind of taken for granted, I think, that Volkswagen people are watching this. So, quick overview of stock suspension. Uh, so this is the front beam and it is an independent front suspension. These are trailing arms, which connect the spindle. The trailing arms are suspended or sprung by, uh, torsion springs, which are in these tubes. So these will work against each other. These arms upper and lower, uh, the right and left are torsion sprung, I guess, if that makes any sense. So that's how the suspension works. Steering box is right here connected to, as you can see, the floor is totally intact here. Steering box, and then you've got a drag link coming back to a pivot, and then an arm connected to the steering to make a turn. So that's basically what's going on stock under these things. But all this is gonna go bye-bye today to start mocking up the Toyota axle and getting it ready to go to its new home. I'm under the impression, I don't know if I'll be able to plate this or if I should just lop it all off and uh, build a tubular frame up front. Probably should just lop it all off, take these boxes out completely so I have more room to work, but we're gonna find that out today. So I'll drop that thing out and then we'll see how the Toyota actually looks in there. Well, that went surprisingly smoothly. Only took about 15 minutes to drop the thing out. I did hack the shifter rod because I could not get it to split apart and it's all bent anyhow, so I wasn't too concerned about it. But original 1964 chassis primer still under there. This beam is in amazingly good condition. So that's a plus. I can uh, probably rebuild it and have it as a spare for the double cab because it's a little loose uh has rebuilt spindles but it still is not the best so probably could rebuild this throw my disc brakes on it and but that's a future problem from future matt so there's the beam out you can see what it has for frame rails and more what i was talking about so this nut actually locks the springs in place uh the torsion springs so that holds them where they need to be. If you took this nut out, they'll finger up. So there's that. And the new axle ready to find its way into home. So I guess I'll get that beam moved and uh, roll this back and set the bus down on it. Mocking up the Toyota axle under there. I think that's approximately where it's going to sit in relation to the body and mind you it's with a 34 inch tire we're still sitting eight inches higher um measuring this compared to the double cab on 28 inch tires with a 34 inch tire this is going to be lifted about eight inches over stock height so not horrible um it is what it is, but to clear that, I don't think eight inches is excessive. I mean, it's tall, it's gonna be a big bus, but I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world. So, placement's pretty decent. Now looking at where there can be an engine in here and brainstorming a few ideas, possibly set the engine behind the axle instead of straight above it, uh, since there are no options really for notching the oil pan like you would in a traditional 4x4. The entire oil pan basically would have to sit on top of the engine. Well, I'm going to end up with an engine all the way up here. All the way up here. Like, pretty high, which is not great. So I'm going to do everything I can to keep the engine below this level, if possible, even if that means moving it back. Thinking about options for maybe make a bed up here that folds back and just do that number. And then back here where the engine used to be, that's gonna be gone. So, something's gonna happen. Here, I'll walk around. 
since the axle is going to be basically below here, that now opens up all of this real estate that used to be engine in the bus. So I'm going to be able to take, like, aside from wheel wells, this is all going to be open. So that gives them a lot more room. I don't know what the heck to do about the hatch situation if I just leave it as it is. If I, I mean, the fuel tank's got to go somewhere, I guess. So maybe build a small fuel tank area back here and all that. So brainstorming, but I think the next thing that you do is get, so I strip down all the stuff off this ALH and you get it mated up to the transmission and start kind of playing with locations for it. But it is greasy as heck. So I picked up the secret weapon, Dollar General oven cleaner. So I'll coat the ever living Jesus out of this thing with oven cleaner and just uh, let it sit and soak and then power wash it off and hope to clean it up some. Cleaning these engines is the worst part of any swap. It's horrible. You get the stuff all over you. Notice I'm wearing different clothes than I was earlier because I was covered in grease. I've got it all up and down my arms. It sucks. But the TDI is clean and I am impressed. This thing looks brand new. Like none of the flaky, crappy rust that you see on these things. It's just, it's minty. And I'm very happy about that. Got the Jeep transmission rolled up here. I'm going to split the transfer case off real quick. I found a buyer for it. And I went ahead and unboxed the Whitbread kit. And what a nice piece. Like, really nice. Nice machined flywheel adapter for the Jeep flywheel. Came with the starter, all the hardware. Like, very, very nice piece. Very happy with that. So, gonna go ahead and get this bolted on the engine, get it made up the transmission, and see where it fits in this chassis. And where we end up. All right. Transfer case split off of the NV 3550 and then bolted up the Whitbread adapter. Freaking nice piece. I I recommend buying one of those. I mean, easy instructions, bolt right up, perfect. So, everything's married together. Pretty actually compact package not horrible so I guess the next thing is I'm going to try to get it up on the cart and position it and see where it lands on the body and kind of go from there so see how this adventure goes all right it's on the cart here and in place under the bus need to make some decisions I guess um, so Pretty much it has to sit, this engine needs to sit behind the axle to get low enough to actually fit in here without taking up the whole inside of the bus, in my opinion. Um, but that puts it coming back into the passenger compartment about, no, well, I don't know, 16 inches or so. And also puts the shifter in the middle, which I think that can be overcome with a little bit of ingenuity. It won't be too far. Like, I might have to put a bump in the floor for the shifter, but I think it's doable. Uh, but the biggest thing I think is going to be cutting all this. If we look at it from the front and kind of compare, you can see it'll go up almost between the frame rails. The turbo is going to be a little bit of an issue, I guess. But it's doable <laughs> one way or another, I suppose. Worst case, we just move these frame rails out a little bit because they don't need to be this far in. Uh, shaking the camera all over my bed. So, I mean, I think it's feasible. I'm going to sleep on it before I start sawzalling it up. And uh, here, I'll drop it down. And show. Click. My lift is not fancy. You have to pull the levers. And then... We'll lower it down. Still lowering. Bear with me. I know this is great, great content. Great content. Just wonderful content. Really? All right, so 
bump back up a little bit. So that's about where we're hitting. It's not the end of the world. I need to do more measuring height wise and see how far up it's going to protrude into the body of the bus and see where we're at. But as it sits, that's what we have to work with. And uh, I think this is feasible. I need to do some noodling on the shifter and some noodling on how much to cut and how the inside is going to work out. But I think this is definitely uh, something that can happen. So thanks for watching again. As always, I appreciate y'all. Do the like, the subscribe, the share, the whole thing. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow, maybe for a short video, if I decide to get crazy and cut the floor out of this thing. So catch y'all later.